we try to downplay and we don't want to be a burden. You know, when your body is telling you something, and mine certainly was, uh, you have to listen. I was at work one day and I received a phone call from my daughter. She wasn't feeling well and she lives um, about two, two and a half hours away from where I work. And so I got in the car and drove to, to where she was and got to the hospital and I was feeling a little off. Uh, went into her ER room and um, I didn't want her to know so I kept kind of leaving the room and uh, was feeling uh, some intense heartburn. Uh, I was just like, just shot right up through my throat. And, and thinking back, it uh, happened the night before as well. And uh, I had some left arm discomfort, a uh, little, little pressure. Uh, at the hospital, I felt uh, even very anxious. Uh, I was starting to sweat. Uh, about the third time I left the room, a nurse walked by and she asked me if I was okay. And I said, oh, I'm just feeling really weird. And I explained to her how I was feeling and she said, we have to admit you immediately. So uh, they took me to the room. My daughter didn't even know that I was being admitted. They did a number of tests, uh, blood work, and you know we're thinking, okay, well, we'll get out of here quickly. I was talking about driving her back home with me. Her test checked out okay. And uh, the doctor came back in, the ER doctor, and he said, I never would have expected to say this, but your test results came back and we, you have some elevated troponin level. And so um, we're gonna have to admit you. Uh, overnight. I was 40 at the time. Although my tests, my EKGs and, and my blood pressure were coming out, you know, in, in a normal range from what the nurses were telling me, um, you know, I was in, every, I had just every single heart attack symptom that you could imagine. Chest pain, left arm, the worst toothache you've ever had in every piece of your arm. Into my other arm, through to my shoulder, like a hot poker in my back. I knew instinctively that it was it was my heart, although the nurses kept saying, you know, it's not your heart, your EKG looks great, you know, your blood pressure's normal. I almost felt like in the ER I was on, you know, probably a level eight of concern. And then when I was admitted, it was almost like, this is gonna be no big deal. You know, you're fine, your tests are fine, uh, and we're gonna basically have you out of here in the morning. In fact, that is exactly what the hospitalist uh, said. She said, I think we'll have you out of here in the morning. And so, you know, I spoke with one of my friends who's a nurse that morning and I said, they're telling me my EKG looks good, my blood pressure's good, and now all of a sudden my troponin is very high. And she said, you know, well, if you're having symptoms, you know, that's, you know, the story. And you have every single heart attack symptom that there is. So, you know, I just think the biggest thing you have to do is listen to your body. Just listen to your body, because you know, I knew the night before when I didn't feel well that something was wrong. I was already starting to actually look at heart attack stuff. And, but you know, you push it all aside. You just push it aside and say, no, there's no way that could possibly be happening to me. I'm active, you know, I eat right. It's just not a possibility. So I've got a little something going on. It's not, you know, and, and so you push it, push it away. The next morning when the cardiologist came in, obviously my uh, troponin level was telling a different story by that point by that point and so she said you know we're going to need to get you into the cath lab and i said i really appreciate all the care here but i'm gonna go home now i've got we've got lots of uh, doctors in lexington i need to be close to all my family that's there and she said that's not where we are that's that's not that's not the place that we're in now she said i've 
looked at all of your records from the ER and you already had a heart attack in the ER. And that was the first that I had heard that. And, you know, it had been, you know, 10 hours at that point probably since uh, that had I had been in the ER. So obviously we were very shocked and um, I was shocked to learn that you know, I felt bad for sure, but it wasn't the worst pain in the ER that I had ever experienced. Now, that night was a much different story. So, um, she said, you know, you need to, you need to be here. Uh, so, we went down and my husband and my daughter and uh, my dad were there and we were all talking with the cath lab folks. Went went back and I was chatting with them and I remember hearing that I had a 99% blockage and so um, I received two stints. I then went into cardiac arrest and uh, coded on the table. For 10 minutes um, I received CPR seven shocks to my heart, um, put two additional stents in, and then also started a balloon pump to pump my heart. So I was then on um, life support for 24 hours. So we went from this is a routine procedure to uh, something very different. And it was, of course, a very difficult time for my family. But um, the next morning, I came off of life support um, and obviously had a lot of questions. And so um, I was in the hospital for several days. So um, I got out on a Sunday and we went back to Lexington and I was like, I need to get in with a cardiologist in my hometown as quickly as possible. I was able to do that. All of my grandparents on, on both sides either had heart attacks or bypass surgery. My dad had bypass surgery at age 59. So heart disease was something that I was very aware of and uh, something that I wanted to try to, you know, eat well and stay active to try to avoid, you know, what you would typically think of uh, as, as heart disease. And I didn't know when I left the hospital that I didn't have your typical plaque blockage. And I'm like, I don't know how I can eat any better. I think anytime anybody looks at your blood work and says, oh, well, you need to eat better. And they don't even ask you what you eat. It's, it's frustrating, you know? And I was very, I was very defeated. I just, you know, it's like, so, and of course, they loaded me up on all of the all of the um, normal type heart attack medicine, and so I was just absolutely wiped out, and um, my heart rate was low. And I really think that it's very possible that they, that they thought, because of my strong family history, that it was possibly even you know I've read about plaque ruptures and that kind of thing. And so I think they just didn't really know. So when you go through something like that and, you know, there's not really a good answer as far as why it happened and you don't know at that point, is this something that can happen again? And you worry, you know, it was so difficult for my family to see me go through that. And then so unexpectedly to go from everything's okay to the doctor coming out and saying things didn't go well and you know that I was on life support and it was just a really emotional time and plus I was just wiped out so it was all I could do to just function even to get from the bed to the living room on the medication that I was on at that point and so it was it was very difficult and you know you think about okay well, I need to get everything in order because what if this happens again I don't want to leave my family and you know without having things taken care of. I, I definitely had uh, PTSD um, 
and discussed it with my um, internal medicine doctor and he was like just the um, emergent care that went on uh, you know you really need to give yourself a year to feel better and that's aside from from the SCAD itself and it was true it was absolutely true in so many ways and mentally and getting involved uh, with other SCAD survivors has really been a huge benefit to my recovery and another thing that was really beneficial for me was cardiac rehab um, it really helped me get through that and even just talking to the nurses and knowing that I was being monitored so if I was uh, pushing myself you know when when to slow down when not to and I think that if I hadn't had that it would have been very very difficult to kind of get your confidence back ultimately what went on in the cath lab um, I don't have any sort of blame you know it is what it is and and they did what they could do to save me whether they knew what my diagnosis was or not and they did and so I'm very thankful and appreciative of that I think what I struggle with the most is the night before being told repeatedly it wasn't my heart and you know, just just because somebody looks a certain way, um, or maybe they're not at that point presenting with all of the symptoms, um, you know, as far as EKGs and troponin levels and, and blood pressure, that, you know, symptoms need to be taken seriously. And um, it's just, it, it is unfortunate. And, you know, the more we get our stories out, hopefully, People will learn that you know there's no specific age or body type that is associated with a heart attack, and that anytime anyone's presenting with symptoms, they need to be taken seriously.